Vice's motherboard obtained unaired footage of rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, in a head-scratching interview with Fox News host Tucker Carlson. The network left out part of the sit-down with Ye, in which he makes inflammatory, if not borderline bizarre, comments about Jewish people and how he would prefer his children to celebrate Hanukkah. Here's some of that footage. Planned Parenthood was made by Margaret Sanger, a known eugenics with the KKK, to control the Jew population. When I say Jew, I mean the 12 lost tribes of Judah, the blood of Christ, who the race, the people known as the race black really are. This is who our people are. I was biting my tongue on my political opinion because I thought it would be better for my children. And now you look up and my kids are going to a school that teaches black kids a complicated Kwanzaa. I prefer my kids knew Hanukkah than Kwanzaa. At least it will come with some financial engineering. <laughs> Kwanzaa doesn't, you know, so they don't teach even Christmas itself, Christmas. In the unaired portion of the interview, Yame even made a claim that, quote, fake children had been planted in his home to manipulate his kids. So to be clear, the kind of kooky thing he was saying there was not the Margaret Sanger did, in fact, believe in eugenics and yeah. has been denounced by Planned Parenthood itself. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the well, I think the real, I would use a word stronger than kooky, <laughs> but the thing about, and I was kind of with them, you know, a lot of people, a lot of black people aren't especially excited about Kwanzaa. They feel like there are a lot of religions that black people actually practiced before they were brought over as slaves. And, you know, Kwanzaa isn't necessarily it for folks. Okay, if you prefer them to be, to study Judaism, completely understandable. But then he gets to that last bit about financial engineering. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. At least if they study Judaism, there'd be some financial engineering. I mean, the, the, the difficult thing about all of this is that, you know, he has t spoken publicly about his mental illness. He has always had this kind of erratic behavior. It's unclear what he's saying half the time, and there's just enough for you to know that it's bad, but not enough to really follow the thread in a lot of instances. And it just, it feels like a train, a train wreck you'd rather not be watching. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would rather not be watching it. I don't, oh, oh. like, he's not a, he's not a, like, why do we why do we seek wisdom in things celebrities have to say and, and have to think? This is a this is a constant conservative criticism. Well, but let me ask you this: It's Tucker Carlson who's chosen to interview him on his show. Do you think that that was a mistake? And moreover, what do you think about the editorial choice to cut these parts out of the aired special? Probably not. I mean, if Kanye West wanted to be on our show, we'd probably interview him, right? If Kanye West people called up tomorrow and said he wants to be on Rising. We, you're well, saying sure, we would but, say no to that? You know, no way. No way on earth. You're, I mean, what, I'm asking about this yeah. critique of why do we look to celebrities for advice. I mean, that is, yeah. a, is a question that could be put to anybody who's ever interviewed him, including Tucker Carlson, in this instance. And then, moreover, what about the second question about, you know, did, did Tucker's producers clip this stuff out to make the rest of the interview seem more palatable, to kind of save Kanye from himself? Are these even the worst parts of the interview? Because quite a, quite a few nutty things were actually aired. Well, right, which is why, which is why I don't think, I mean, what, what would there be their interest in, in preventing you from, right, he, they, it, he says plenty of nutty things in the interview as it aired. So I, I, so I presume there was some other editorial reason for cutting it well, down. It could they, be, felt, they thought that was not in yeah. their judgment. That was a less interesting part than what they aired. There's, I mean, you, you do have to make decisions like that all the uh, time. Absolutely. We have to make decisions like that, et cetera. Uh, absolutely. But there was one part of the interview that we didn't play where Kanye says something and says, actually, can you cut that out? That, that doesn't sound great. I mean, there is a little, there's a degree of self-awareness here. And to be clear, not just Tucker Carlson, but Candace Owens and a number of other conservative figures had in the lead up to this interview and to the lead up to his more clearly anti, or I shouldn't say more clearly, but clearly anti-Semitic tweets, um, gone really fully in in support of Kanye West in a way that could be awkward if a certain level of anti-Semitism is breached. And you Candace like, defended the tweet. Exactly. Yeah. So what, you, what you've seen is, strangely, a lot of people just doubling down. I don't know that I've seen anything from Tucker since the no, anti-Semitic no. tweet, but Candace Owens at very least avers that it wasn't anti-Semitic at all, which is an, 
an interesting posture for a mainstream conservative yeah, person to be taking. I'm not the biggest fan of Candace Owens, but that, that's a criticism of her, not of, I mean, Tucker just well, had this interview with... But the, but the question is, if the worst parts of the interview come out, the parts that kind of rise to the level of anti-Semitism in the tweet, does that put Tucker in a difficult position having come out so enthusiastically in defense of, of Kanye did, earlier in the week? That. Yes, he did. I mean, come on. He says, we, yeah, wow, people are trying to silence you. You have great ideas. This is, this, and now I understand why you're so dangerous to the public. You know, the, the, I could pull up the title of the videos there. They are uncritically supported. Now, I think that you and I did an interview with Kanye West. It, we would, we would, it, it would be titled and characterized in a way that didn't imply that we were like team Kanye. It would just be an informational interview. Yeah. And I think that there, there is obviously, obviously a incentive for Tucker Carlson to not want to be associated with the, yeah, the I don't worst think he tried to so I think he bigoted aspects him, of what he said. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And well, that's not what I thought he did. But. Yeah. Well, well, Sharon Osbourne, speaking of uh, celebrities, the wife of famous rock star Ozzy Osbourne, she weighed in on some of Ye's comments that did not make it to air, namely that the BLM organization is nothing but a scam. TMZ caught up with her while she was out shopping on Hollywood's glamorous Rodeo Drive. Watch this. We gave $900,000 to that, and um, I'd like my money back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, she could have said that before. <laughs> When asked about Ye's head-turning White Lives Matter t-shirt, Osborne said she doesn't understand his messaging, but that she, but that he shouldn't be canceled. Um, I, I, so that was, that was a great, well, I'd like my money back from giving it to BLM, which again, which this is going to the, you know, the gross, which we've covered on the show before, the gross mishandling of funds to the Black Lives Matter organization, which increasingly just looked like a front for those s several individuals yeah. to buy like luxury houses for themselves, to buy hype houses, because yeah. this is how they were going to spread the message of Black Lives Matter. This is how they were going to promote police accountability and non-racism was by buying a beautiful mansion to make TikTok videos or yeah, something. Yeah, it's so disrespectful that was their claim. <laughs> to the millions of people who marched in the street, who gave their time to try to organize real right. efforts on the ground, who gave money because they were genuinely moved yeah. by the image that we were all moved by of a, of a human being, a fellow American, a citizen being choked to death in the street by someone yeah, who's give, supposed give to protect the state. Give to the Innocence state. Project or something. Yeah, and, to, to and moreover, you know, the fact that I think actually Candace Owens has a has a documentary about this that's airing this week sometime where she, she she goes and follows up with Floyd's family and other people in the community and finds that they're living in substandard conditions and have not saved any of this money. And obviously it's a travesty. Yeah. It's a While travesty the founders that, are in multiple million dollar right. mansions. I, I think there, there's no real defense of how they behaved yeah. and what is to be done with the $60 million or so that's left sitting in the pot of the $90 million that were raised. That's a really important question. And I would hope that the people who had a sincere commitment to these issues are able to take the reins again yeah. and do something productive with what's left. But I certainly don't begrudge Sharon Osborne. No, I think she speaks for a lot of people. She <laughs> speaks for a lot of people. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, stay with us. We'll be back in just a minute with more Rising.